What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. And what's we had talked a lot about the, or excuse me, not that much hmm. about the gold mines last time. We we touched on it and yeah. everything, but I don't know if you can pull up some of that video. Chris. Do, do do Matt Gutman gold mine gold mine Am, oh, Matt great. Gutman let's go gold mining Amazon. Yeah. No. So essentially, I, I had in another woman, L. Scott. But that was a lot of the influence of the outsiders mm. coming in and basically telling them, well, you got to do this now. And so some of the things that has happened to a couple of the tribes in the past past really kind of pushed, I think, these two over the edge and said, absolutely not. We are not having any contact. And the other problem is the youth that are being born into the Shuar community and tribe are getting glimpses of the bigger cities and leaving. <laughs> She was in episode 144, and she spent some time out in the Amazon last year and talked about when they came across the gold mines and how nasty some of the gold miners were. I think some of that she talked about on camera, too. But this is like – you See, want to talk about taking out trees and barroning the entire land. Yeah. Yeah, just what, type in Amazon after that. It'll, it'll come up. There you go. That first one right there? Yep, yep, yep. yep. All right, so some, we're going to have to talk over this because it'll be copyright. Cut forward like uh, like a minute. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, 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 right there. That's good. Yep. So Whoa, we, this is this is in the Amazon. This is the desert where the Amazon rainforest used to be. This is a spreading where, scar where is, in the Western what Amazon. Is West? This is Peru. We we were there. This was the day we were. Dude, that we, was all trees? This We filmed this on the road. This is the Trans-Amazon Highway. This is our shit. This is what we do. This that's is your me, video. Me and Matt were right there. Yeah, that's that's. Dude, <sighs> dude, how many miles of land have they taken out for these gold mines now? A lot, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres. Seventeen percent of the total right Amazon rainforest has been destroyed. Dude. Yeah. So look at the scale of that, and think. And here's the thing: I go straight to think about how many animals are in that forest. When you wake up in the treehouse and you hear how many animals are in that forest and you realize it, it takes years yes. to realize it. And then when you see that, you go, oh my God, that just, it's, you're losing so many heartbeats. Is that the Trans-Amazon highway? So this is the offshoot. This is the, the, the Trans-Amazon is actually paved. I'm, I'm driving, Matt's next to me. And so we're actually going towards the Las Piedras River here. And it's beaten up old Hilux. But this road just – see, that's a single Brazil nut tree out there in the distance because they, they're not allowed to cut Brazil nut trees. Oh, so they leave one tree. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate you. Which a Brazil that's nut nice. tree won't produce Brazil nuts without orchid bees. So that doesn't oh work God. anyway. But how much – so there's there's basically like a lot of untapped gold, like a fuck ton of it. And so Okay. So the gold here, first it? of all, is – is terrible gold. It's wait, also wait, how do you have terrible? I don't it's know not like high. I don't. I don't either. It's not high carat gold. Like it's not high quality oh. gold. Um, but it's also it's in the soil as powder. So if you dip your hands into the bottom of a stream and like swish the water around, you come up with like some gold dust on your on your on your skin. Like in the creases of your skin, you can just barely see this gold dust. So what they do is they cut the forest, burn. Dude, this I actually got scared at one point that like our skin was gonna melt off. It was it was, it was hot. so hot, and then these dudes. And came so they burn the forest down to do this. Yeah, and then the fire spreads. And then the fire fire spreads, especially this year. It was very dry, and this year actually scared the shit out of me because I just read this New York Times article about how the Amazon was going through record levels of drought, and they keep warning that if we push it too far, the Amazon could get to a point where the moisture that the jungle creates that makes the rain of the rainforest, you break that cycle because you've cut too much of the forest. And so they're worried that if we keep burning it, we're at 17 to 20% of the Amazon gone, turned into pasture land. If that cycle gets broken, when you wake up in that treehouse every single day, you see, I've, and I've heard this too, that over the Amazon river, which is the largest river by, by volume on earth, over the Amazon river is a river of water in the air. There's literally a river in the sky over the what? Amazon River. Yep, look look it up. So here, even over our river, even over this river, every morning, the mist that's produced by this river in the shape of a cloud, in the exact shape of the river, so is we... moving over this. So each tree is pumping gallons and gallons of water into the air every day, pulling it up out of the ground, pumping it into the air. 
that's all collecting into rain clouds and then raining back down on the jungle. So above the Amazon rainforest is a larger invisible river in the sky that sometimes we can see in the form of clouds. Whoa. And you've talked about that before. We don't know. It's tough with, with all this. And you're talking about the one example with the moisture right now. But we don't know, for example, what the percentage of no return is. But how close – your question is how close do you want to get to whatever that is to take your chances? Not close. That's the point. Look at this. Look at here. This is one of the trees. This is an example. You won't see someone cutting a tree like this. That's an ironwood? That is a kapok tree. But Holy it's... shit. Look at how big – Yeah. Oh, my God. Is it that no. whole thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so big – Look, to get a shot of it, you had to – this was Dude. very stressful getting this shot. That's Look some at that avatar thing. shit. That thing takes me about t- like two – it took me two hours to climb it the first time I got to the top of that tree. You climbed it? Yeah, I did. Like with a rope? I did bring a rope. I climbed it like the way I, you rock climb, like every 20 feet putting putting gear. Uh, wait, are you attached or could you Somebody fall? was belaying me from below. So as long they as you go up – They were doing what to you? Belaying. So with lead climbing you – Says you, this like I'm gonna know this shit. <laughs> so if we're lead climbing, I'm I'm gonna get this wrong. Now if we're lead climbing, I go up, let's say 20 feet, and then I put a carabiner into in, into the rock, or in this case, on the vine. I would put a piece of webbing around and then put a carabiner, and then I would string my rope through the carabiner. So now if I fall, let's say you're belaying me, you got my rope. So you, there's 30 feet of rope, and then I put some gear, and now you got me. I could sit back and let go of the tree, but then I climb up another 30 feet. Again, I wrapped a piece of webbing around the tree, put a carabiner, put my rope through it. And so I inchworm my way up the tree, but you're always down here belaying me. So you're feeding rope as I'm going up and up and up the tree. So if I stop paying attention, though, we if got a stop, problem. Yeah, if you stop paying attention, we got a problem. <laughs> and then eventually you get to the top of this tree and you're standing on – I'm talking about like the oak. The You could drive right now and try to find the biggest oak tree you could find. You will not find a tree that's even close to the size of one of the branches of that oh, tree. no. Like branches so big, like this table, you can go walking on these branches and it's crazy. So then I get up there and then, so now I have the end of my rope. And then what I would do is set the system up so that then you start climbing. And so I belay Mm. you from above. So then as you climb, I have you and I'm tied to the tree. And then eventually we're both on top of the tree, which is going to happen. I just told you a story about your future. No, thanks. I'm good. I'm good. I'll stay. I'll stay down. I think that that's gotta happen. I'll stay on the ground with Uncle Jim and our and our, we- <laughs> and our weaponry and shoot anything that comes at us. No, but look at this. You can see what a good job they did, though. This, this is was... this is an amazing report. We'll put this link in oh, the description God. so people can see it. Yeah. But the when they do, we know how they set these fires. So they just like literally start a match and Dude. let it go. How do they do it? Yeah. So me and JJ. Um, we again, JJ, just everything we said, and we're going to get to JJ and the whole backstory there for people who haven't followed that. But you did describe who he is a little bit, but I want to get to that later. But keep going. Um, we, you know, we see these burning fires, and here's the weird thing: out of sight, out of mind. If you go to somebody on the street and you go, if I'd say to anybody in town, if I go to one of my guys and I go, "Hey, how bad are the fires this year?" and they're like, "They're not. They're fine," because you're in town. You're walking past pharmacies and coffee shops and whatever else. You're in this little gold mining town. You literally don't see over the buildings to the fires. It's happening out in the jungle. And so I said to JJ, I was like, listen, you know everybody. I said, find me someone that just cut down their forest and is like going to burn it. And that they're going to burn it because they want to plant. So they got to burn all the trees on it. So one of his relatives, relative of a relative, had recently leveled this huge thing of forest. And so one of the guys on my team is a conservation photographer named Mosin Cosme. And so we went with me, Mosin, JJ. We go to this place where they had just knocked down all these trees. We're literally standing there. It's like 4 p.m. The guy just takes a lighter, holds it to the ground. The rainforest does not burn. You could napalm the rainforest and it won't burn. But cut it down and let it bake in the tropical sun for a month, all the moisture gets sucked up out of the trees. So this dude, this farmer guy, he just took a normal Bic lighter. It's like propane. Held it to the ground and the largest campfire you've ever seen. Within two seconds, dude, we were there. First of all, our DSLRs were like flatting out. Like I've never seen a DSLR stop working. It was so hot that they were like melting to our hands. The drone wouldn't work. It was 70 foot flames. It was it was catastrophic in moments. And of course, even though the jungle has been cut, all the animals think they can keep living in the trees. So all the downed trees still have lizards and birds and snakes and mammals living. Even when it's on the ground. Even when it's on the ground. And so you they just hear the death. animals running. Some of them just, a lot of animals, their instinct is to hunker down. 
you know, if you chase a snake into a hole, the snake's instinct is this bird or this fox or this predator can't get me in this hole. So I'm just going to stay here and you can't get to me. And a lot of the smaller mammals will do the same. Is it like that old experiment with the frogs that they talk about where if you boil a frog, it'll stay there and not leave because it gets, it doesn't realize it's getting too hot. Is it a similar effect with animals? Like they don't have, with some of the ones you're talking about, they don't have that fight or flight when the burning trees on the ground, they're like, I'm going to stay in my hole and then it gets too hot and they die. Yeah. I think, I think what happens again, I think uh, a lot of animals depend on camouflage. I've, I've literally watched a lizard be like, you can't see me, you can't see me. And then the flames just take over. And then it's just charred. Like oh. it's literally, it's like, it's like, you know, Independence Day when they, when they nail the, yeah. the, the Statue of Liberty in the, what was it the Empire State Building? It just, yep. Yep. this just, once that, once those flames go. And then, so the crazy thing is we watched the flames go up and there's this horrible shot I got where JJ, he didn't know I was filming. I was, he thought we were filming the forest and I turned back at JJ and I caught this candid moment of, of this man who's devoted his entire life to protecting the Amazon. And he's just got his hands on this log and he's, watching the amazon burn and i just had it on his face and and in the video he he sees me and he you know then he he walks out of frame but he was just having this moment where he just you could just see him taking in the destruction and let and it was hitting him and watching those flames go up and then you know i'm i'm concentrated on getting my shots and mosin's concentrating on getting his shots mosin's awesome by the way i follow Dude, him yeah mosin mosin in those situations is only one person that i'll work with and so we were that's like our thing. We'll we'll go out and do firework together. It's very, very, very intense. Um, and you really have to have the type of relationship with someone where you just, you know, you get to that point where you play off each other. It's got to be that thing where you don't even really got to talk. Like I'll see something that's interesting and he'll already be circumnavigating around me and like grabbing it against the sunset and understanding the angles. And he's, you know, a real photographer. I'm, I'm, I point my camera at things and I try to get a good picture. He's actually making art mm. in those intense moments. And, uh, but on that particular day, you know, you lose people, you know, 70 foot flames and there's exploding trees, the sap heats up inside these trees. And so you're, you're walking around and all of a sudden, boom, and this entire tree will shatter. And so there'll be shards of eight foot splinters were flying through the air. Everything's burning. Everything is ash. There's no oxygen in, in the air. And you take one breath of smoke, like that type of smoke, and you're down. Like I understand what firefighters go through. Like if you get hit with one blast of smoke it will take you out. I've, I say this because it's happened to me. What do you guys do? Like, Because when you're near this- We run. We run. We try to get our pictures and run. On this day though, the fire did like this V-shaped formation and I was looking over to the left and I, all of a sudden I, I heard like one shout and I just knew. And I go running and like, you know, I'm running over this log and there's just huge fires. I don't know where JJ is, but I know that Mosin's in trouble. And as I'm running, his camera's on the ground. I don't see him pick oh, up his no. camera, keep running. He got blinded by some smoke, I think inhaled some smoke, went running blind out of the fires into the forest, found a swamp, dove into it. Like there was basically just like swampy, muddy ground. And he just put his face in to just take the heat off of his face, ripped his shirt off. And then me, JJ, we all came in and like he was trying to remain conscious as we're squeezing muddy water onto his back and just like trying to cool his body. Like it's, and anybody that works anywhere near fire is cringing right now because they're going a bunch of inexperienced people. Like you're going to die doing this. Um, but I mean, that day- You got to capture it though. You got to show people gotta, what they're doing. But that's the thing. If we didn't do this, now, granted, we could have some better gear. We could do this with gas masks and probably survive a lot longer because um, – That'd be good for content, not going to lie. What, Paul gas Rosalie masks? with a gas mask out in think the middle of the Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do. Well, I got to do something because <clears throat> every, every time after we do those fires, we were like, this that, that just took like three years off of our life. Like you just – you feel it. You You feel like less of a – that last one, it was like, I would say it was a month before I was walking properly. Because we're out there and it's like, you got to get that footage. When was that one again? Uh, the, one? The, the day I'm talking about with Mosin, that was that was a couple of years ago. Dak right. sent us down. That was the first flight after COVID. And we were like, it was two of us on the plane. And there was no, like, there was nobody else on the plane. We were on masks <laughs> with a, we had double masks and a face shield. 
Oh no! You and then, then I watched the stewardess. I watched the stewardess. You survived in the Amazon for 16 years, and you're double masking and face shielding. Yeah, you, you couldn't get on the plane. You had to be like quadruple vaxxed. You had to have like a vaccination needle sticking out of your neck. You had to have a double mask, and then you had to have this face shield. It was Peruvian policy, and so. Oh, I would. And then what I loved the most was I watched this. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, so me and Mosin, we're 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 sitting next to each other, but you can't hear anything because the plane is loud. You got your mask on, and then you have the face shield. It completely all the sound is out so we're like writing things down showing it to each other we're using our phones to communicate because it's too loud on the plane and you're like shuddering through the andes and then i watch the stewardess and this guy is going like you know in spanish he's going can you get me a drink and the stewardess is like what he's like can you get me a drink and their faces are getting closer and closer and closer together and finally he just takes all the masks off and just goes get me a drink <laughs> Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.